Close your. Okay, that works. What music oh, did you man, pick? I what music oh. did you pick? <laughs> Is this a section where the Same song again? I never used the song. They're saying you already used that song. It's so nice. I did. You already used, Dude, used the same song again? I never used the song. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> There's so it's many going. echoes. I didn't use this song before. <laughs> Apparently you did. I don't know what they're talking about. And multiple people are saying you Internet, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, someone from the chat gave me that song, suggested it. I forget who it was, but uh, it definitely wasn't used it. before, as far as I remember. Anyway, Rip, would you move a little bit? There you go. Yeah. You, I need to move? Yeah, just move a little. Like two inches. What? You got to move to your uh, right. Move to Why your right. Why did you just take the whole thing? Because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so just move to the right. <laughs> I don't know so how to do it. <laughs> Is this bad? All right, it's oh good enough. God. We don't need wait, to see wait. your whole face anyway. How about this, then? Is That's that better? better. That's better. All right, that works. All right. All right, Internet, you how are you guys doing? We made it. It's an early edition of ATP Live. Uh, just so that we could get the legend, MYK, on the show as a guest. Um, what's going on, Mikey? How are you doing? Chilling, man. Just another day. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you've been looking <laughs> at something. Uh, and we also have Ripal on. What's going on, Rip? What's up? Uh, you just got done streaming how many hours of Killer Instinct? I have no idea. Too many hours? Five? I didn't, I didn't even know you could talk to your Xbox. That, that, your stream today was actually really good. <laughs> Normally, I'm not a big fan. Uh -huh. But today, your stream was <laughs> magnificent. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that thing with Prodigy Internet, in case you uh. missed it, this guy, I don't know who he is, but he's like a, like a guy. You know, he streams and he's got tattoos and different colored eyes and stuff. Whoa. You know, it seems cool. Uh, and I guess he was streaming KI He's at the same the time, and Rip ran into him in like an online ranked match. And then Rip's chat started trolling Rip and saying, this guy's talking hella shit. And he, I, actually, <laughs> as far as I know, I don't think he was, though he could have said something. But Rip was like, oh, this guy's talking shit. Everyone go over there and fuck him up. <laughs> yo, yo, I didn't say that, man. I didn't and do that. The, well, I mean, more or less. I, this is, uh, no, no, the, the, the chat took it upon themselves okay, to go over. Okay, the chat took it upon themselves to go over there and troll him. But the best part is, so he started getting pissed off and, like, deleting everyone from, banning everyone <laughs> from the chat, right? Then people would go over there from Rip's chat and be like, hey, Prodigy, mod me, dude. I'll help you with all these fucking guys, dude. So he started desperation modding people from Rip's chat in his own chat so they could enforce that shit. It was, it was magnificent. Very well Hold done. Uh, I mean, the KI <laughs> matches were also cool, I guess. But uh, yeah, that part was... <laughs> so anyway... Um, you know, I want to, I, of course, I want to talk about Tekken with you, Mikey, later, but I'm, I'm also interested, and a lot of people are also interested in Killer Instinct, and they actually have asked me to have you on the show, Rip, so we can find out more about how you feel about the game. You did write the okay. guide, am I correct? I did. Or co wrote the guide with uh, I Tom co -wrote Brady. These, exactly. Co wrote the strategy guide with Bill Minutis. Just you and Brady? <laughs> me and Bill Minutis. It's Brady, all right. It's Bill Minutis. Anyway, I'm trying to sell the guide here, okay? Come oh, on. I mean, Bill it's Bill Minutis, not yeah, Tom Brady. There you go. Minuto. <laughs> Bill, yeah. Anyway, keep the jokes to the pros, all right, uh, Mikey? Uh, so uh, <laughs> so uh, tell me about the game. I mean, obviously, let's face it. You're No matter what you think about it, in the end, mm -hmm. you can't really say it's bad. Let's be honest. Even if it were, which I don't think it is, you wouldn't say yeah. that. So instead of telling me what you think of the game... Tell me why you think what you think of the game. Let's talk about the game in that context. So, you, okay. could, you know, like, like explain what you like about it. I'll start off with what I don't like about it. Okay. Uh, what, what I don't like about it is just the limited roster, right? I think that's going to be one of the biggest complaints about the game right now. 
Uh, the good, I mean, not the good thing about it, but like the part that makes it not so shitty is just that the characters are really diverse, even though there's so few of them. Uh, so you know, you'd hope that that would be the case with this this few characters. But uh, the whole idea is that you know it's gonna be it's gonna have extra characters rolling out over time. Uh, I kind of wish it was a little bit faster, but I mean, like Spinal's not coming out till January, which now is only a month away, and uh, Fulgore's in March. You know, so it's it's kind of a two month cycle, and uh, so it feels kind of <laughs> slow. But you know, we'll see how it plays out. I'm, I'm really excited for this model because the rumor It'll be is that dead. <laughs> the rumor <laughs> is the rumor is that they're going to rotate the free character. So if they do that, then right now it's Jago. You know, if they do that, then I think that it's going to follow basically the League of Legends model, which is what I've wanted to see from a free-to-play fighting game. So, I don't know, I'm excited about that. Uh, gameplay part of it, um, you know, it's it's really hard for me to decide how it's going to be in a tournament setting. Uh, like, I feel like I need, if I played someone in a first of five, I feel like, okay, I can beat this guy. I understand how he's, how and when he's breaking combos and when he's trying to counter-break me, etc. First of two in that kind of a situation is really bad in this game. It's it's like playing two rounds in Tekken 5-0. That's how I feel about it. So I feel tournament-wise... Well, okay, is, okay. Let me, let me ask you a couple questions of, about what okay. you've said so far. Uh, I was going to uh, talk about what you mentioned about the rotating character thing. Uh, the only thing I have to say about that is I would be surprised as if anyone who owns an Xbox One is unwilling to buy the entire game. Because, I mean, as far as I know, people are saying it's like the only dope game on the whole system. So, and if you spend all that money on the system, why wouldn't you just put another fucking 20 bucks 20 down bucks, yeah. and support an American fighting game developer? As much shit as I love to talk, I would buy that game in a fucking heartbeat if I had an Xbox One. Why else would you buy an Xbox One? Yep. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, that part no, of it, just... it should be uh, in instantaneous as far as I'm concerned. But the other thing you mentioned about how you feel like you need more games to, um, like, adapt or at least learn how your opponent plays... Uh, mm -hmm. My instinct is, my retort to that is, uh, word on the street is that this game has a lot of rock, paper, scissors involved. And if you were to play rock, paper, scissors just right off the bat with a stranger, it's going to be pretty hard to beat them. You know, it's not really that much mm -hmm. of a game of skill. So I can understand that if the whole rock, paper, scissors aspect exists so heavily as people are saying it does, obviously you're going to need more games to know if this is a rock kind of guy or if he's a paper kind of guy. Am I right mm -hmm. about that assumption, Rip? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, so yeah, I mean, in that in that regard, obviously you're gonna need, uh, you're definitely gonna need more games, more games to play. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed earlier on stream, and I was watching you a lot. Uh, when as a spectator, when I was watching that, I noticed that there was a shitload of combo breakers, a shitload, mm -hmm. and not a shitload of counter breakers. Why is right. that? Counter breakers are really risky. So with my play style, I prefer not to use them. Like, I would rather have my combo broken 10 times than to just open myself up for them to combo me. Like, I may be looking at that wrong right now, or I may be viewing the risk-reward of that incorrectly, but to me, I'd rather, you know, try to trick them into breaking on reaction, or, you know, not breaking on reaction with lights and mediums and uh, forcing them to get locked out that way rather than go for a counter-breaker. Well, okay, I, I guess... You, like... Go ahead, Mikey, what's up? What if you, like... What if you like downloaded them like after like one round and then you notice mm -hmm. like they broke that combo in the same part of that combo twice mm -hmm. and then next round you break it on them? Wouldn't you go for the co the counter breaker there? Yeah, I mean like that's that's one way to look at it. But or it's like instead I'll I'll just switch to a medium instead of a heavy in that part of the combo. You know? Yeah, what I mean? that's what I was gonna uh, ask. So, yeah. uh, what I was gonna ask is basically in order to know what what do you what's the reward for a counter breaker? Counter breaker, you get them locked out for longer, and you get a you reset your KV meter. So basically, like say your combo is about to end, and you feel like they're going to break it at the end because they might die or something. You do the counter breaker. Well, say they're not going to die, but anyway, you you'd reset the whole meter so you can do a whole new combo again, and they're locked out for longer so you can get more damage out of it. Basically, uh, so it's really rewarding. But the risk is that it's fully punishable. Yeah, like you with a counter breaker, you're open to get comboed. But you can then breaker their combo that they're punishing you. You with. can. Exactly. So it's not that risky. Right, but I mean, if somebody's, for example, like a lot of people break on the first hit of the combo, right? Uh -huh. So it, against those people, you're thinking like, okay, maybe I'll just counter break them as soon as I start a combo, right? But then you go in for like, say you land in like a jump and kick or something, and then you counter break, it whiffs. Now you only got like nothing in potential damage or anything, you know, and they get a combo on you now, you know? So you didn't really risk, I mean, you risked a lot basically for very little. 
from the sound of it to me, and again, I haven't had much experience with the game, it seems like the amount of risk versus reward really is based on whether or not the rock, paper, scissors pans out after the risk. So something extremely high risk, let's say like a counter breaker, could mm -hmm. be extremely low risk if you guess right in the follow-up forthcoming rock, paper, scissors match. So you could reduce the right. risk of your counter breaker right. if you guess right, like, is yeah. what I'm saying. Or they could counter break you back at that point. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so if, there is a huge lasagna of uh, guessing. It's 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 deep, man. It's yeah. A deep lasagna. Deep is dish. there any like short combos that are just guaranteed and you could just do like you know, no. two? Don't ever one ask a question super... like that, amigo. <laughs> Don't ever fucking ask a question like that. Yeah. Short <laughs> combos that are guaranteed. Come on, no. man. That would be gay, <laughs> right? Nothing. Here's the thing: if they, like you can't they... just do like low for sure, you or something. No, don't ever try that. That's that, no, you can't actually. That. You can do that. You can do that. You can't do it. You could breaker it though, right? Uh, Michael's down count as an opener, but it's gonna do like five percent damage. You could go five percent at a time, Mikey. Yeah. The whole game, unless you uh, accept that the entire game revolves around the combo system, it won't you it won't sink in. Initially, I was thinking so much about the game outside of that, and really, a big chunk of the game lies in this. The mind games right. and everything mm -hmm. lies within the combo system, which obviously yeah. was by design. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's interesting, I guess. Uh, I'm, you know, again, the only thing that's keeping me from playing it is the console it's on, which yep. reminds me, uh, what are the chances, I asked you in your chat earlier, Rip, what are the chances mm -hmm. of this coming out on PC? Uh, you know... I asked the developers that question when I did the interviews for the Ultra Fan book, uh -huh. and their responses were kind of mixed. Like it sounded like you know we've been building this platform; it's got some Windows 8.1 integration. We've tried doing cross-platform stuff on a previous title we worked on. You know what I mean? So it sounded like there was a chance that they might do it, but personally, I feel like you know this is the game for Xbox One right now. Like, I might be wrong about them, but I feel like it is the game. And so if they were to say, well, we're going to take the game that's exclusive and selling our console, and we're just going to put it on Windows where everyone else can access it, I think that's a stupid move, and I don't think they'll do it. You think that's a stupid move? Because I think that's a brilliant move. I mean, fuck I Xbox. Why don't they just put their game out there for more hands to be able to play? Because, I mean, okay, so, like, you're, you're talking from the perspective of maybe Double Helix, the guys who developed the game, right. right? I'm talking about the perspective of Microsoft, the guy who's trying to sell the console. The poor, the my, poor, poor Microsoft that needs all that help. Help struggling, right. struggling yeah, well, out they're trying, there. They're trying to sell that console because if the console doesn't sell, then you know they got no other money. You know, like yeah, but the developers of this fighting well. game, I think, deserve uh, more people playing their game. I you know definitely agree with that. I would love to see it on PC. That's how I feel. I personally yeah. would buy it instantaneously. Uh, I mean, that sounds badass. I think a lot so of people would. yeah, a lot shitloads of people would. You know, tons mm -hmm. of people would. So. I mean, especially if it maintains this um, affordable price tag, dude, mm -hmm. that shit will sell like hotcakes. So, yep. I mean, I, I definitely think they should do that, but I don't know if they will. Uh, and hopefully they will. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, how much was Dive Kick? How what? How much does Dive Kick cost? I don't know. Maybe 15 bucks. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm saying for five bucks more, you get KI? Easy. Yeah. <laughs> I can agree with that. I mean, I'm not a big Dive Kick hater or anything, but. Yeah, exactly. Duh. I'm just <laughs> of course. You know? Uh, but all right. That's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in it. I feel like uh, lots of people have said this, and I agree with them. I feel like the game struggles on stream. Like, as a stream yeah. game, it's. It, it struggles, but I've heard it's very fun to play. I've also seen it in person, and it looks shitloads better in person than it does on stream. All of yep. the little, tiny, minute graphical details are what makes it look as nice as it does. And on stream, you really lose a shitload of the detailed quality of the graphics. So, I mean, those are some interesting hurdles that it has to jump over, uh, but... Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited about the game. Is there anything else here? You're, you're going to uh, Thursday run back today, right? I'm going to try to. I'm gonna, I got to go to work after we finish up here, and then depending how long that takes me, if I make it, I'll make it. We'll see. You'll make it. Um, I'll try. And you have to win because, you know, I'm not playing this game, and when Injustice was uh, really popping, I was the one defending the Tekken players, okay? You know? Mm. So you're the one defending mm -hmm. the Tekken player's name today, so you're going to well, have to win. thanks for the pressure, man. I'm sorry to put it on you like that, but don't fuck up, you know? 
I'm not there. I'm, anyway. Deathstroke isn't there to fucking shoot all those fucking Mortal Dude, Kombat players. See, if I had Deathstroke, I could make something happen. Uh, you can I, make something I got happen. Sadira. Don't be a bitch. Sadira. You got we'll it. Try. You're a bitch. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. So that's cool. I'm interested. I'm looking for. You're going to be streaming Ki a lot more. Obviously, you got your hands on an Xbox mm -hmm. One, so that's going to be the new thing. So everyone, check that shit out if you're interested in Prodigy getting owned 24/7. Um, <laughs> oh man! And then when your chat started saying that there's an EMP rhythm division, <laughs> that part <laughs> made me laugh so hard. Oh, that sounds so oh, good. Oh, Prodigy is a like, part of the rhythm division oh, of Empire. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was really Damn. good, really good. Anyway, all right, Mikey. So um, look at the, you, the look movement. What did you just say? I have no idea. You're off the show. <laughs> anyway, what's going on, Mikey? It's um, like Triforce, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'm, I I don't know him too uh, closely. But uh, a lot of people have asked me to have you on the show. And, uh, you know, some of these new guys don't know that, you know, we started doing podcasts like back what? in 2010, back in I Am Tekken. Uh, dot Damn. com, which you lost. <laughs> How did you fucking lose that domain, you scrub? What a scrub. King of scrubs. Watch that's going to happen to my domain. Don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dude, watch. A bot's going to come in and scoop your site just like it did. <laughs> it could. I don't even know how to renew my domain. <laughs> Dan handles all that shit. So. Oh, shit. Yeah, I don't. I mean, Damn. hopefully that doesn't happen. But, yeah, back in the day, uh, Mikey and I, before either of us knew anything about the Internet uh, or streaming or any of that, we were making podcasts. And, uh, you know, those were good times back in the heyday of Tekken 6. And since then, you yeah. kind of haven't, uh, you know, you don't uh, – you're obviously – uh, being recorded kind of by here. a toaster right now, so you don't have a working computer. You don't have. You're out of touch with the with the chat with the scene. So a lot of them want to know how you feel about Tag Two. You're playing Christy Lars, so a lot of people are asking about your characters. So let's just get into that. Um, there has been mixed uh, opinions on Tag Two as a fighting game, as a Tekken game. Uh, and first thing I want to know is how do you feel about that game overall? What do you like and what do you dislike about Tekken Tag 2? Um, I think for the most part I like everything about the game except the only things I don't like is uh, I mean Rage you know, only lasts 10 seconds but 10 seconds you can still make something happen and you know, sometimes something happening is like a poke landing and taking not 50% <laughs> yeah like, that kind of stuff I don't like. Like, the Rage poke damage is just too high. And I think, like, in general, Rage, a lot of stuff is a lot, a lot of too, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff does too much damage. <laughs> and I feel like... How many, how many, how many? And the other thing I... <laughs> and the other thing I don't like, too, is that, uh... The thing about combos is that it's too easy for, like... Oh, I mean, like, coming from a Tekken player, like, saying the game is easy, but, like, I feel like the buying and the tag assault system is just too easy. It's just, like, people that couldn't do combos before, they could always do, like, 45% at least with a easy-ass combo, and it's like, yeah, I guess. You're out of your fucking mind, dude. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? You think the tag assault system is easy? It's easily the most complicated part of the game other than movement. I mean, from, like, a beginner's point, like, when I'm just playing online, this is, like, I play online a lot now, mm -hmm. so, because there's no arcade to go to, <laughs> but, um, just, like, playing people online, they just do, like, hop kick, like, with Jin on counter hit, and they just do, like, a one, two, three, and I'm just, like, cool, and then they just do, like, A, B, C filler, and then, bam, ender, that's it, and it does, like, 40%, and it's just, like, okay, cool, I guess this guy's good, <laughs> but... I don't guess play that's Killer Instinct. Requires... <laughs> <laughs> don't play Killer Instinct, man. To be good now. Everyone's good at uh, that shit, dude. Don't play that game. Yeah. Man. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Personally speaking, I think that um, Tag Assault is atrocious. I think it's terrible. I think it's way too complex. I think to maximize it, it's just fucked up. You ha the position of their body combined to, with the ring, the wall, the to corner. maximize and stuff like that. Yeah, it's complicated. But for like basic, easy, like A, B, C, do filler here. That's never gonna drop. You know, those kind of moves are nothing's I, never gonna drop. I completely d disagree with you on that. What do you think, Re Reap? Uh, I watched Mike drop some enders yesterday. Mm -hmm, I should have mm -hmm, hit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. easy. So easy, easy enders. Peasy. Well, you know what I mean. This is just like online, like venting, but you know, but still. I'm talking about the game in just... general. Like online, obviously, it's gonna suck six dicks in a row. I mean, just mm -hmm. Tekken Tag Two. Forget the online component. I just think 
tag assault is kind of a like even though it can be complicated with like how you can manipulate like the system with tag assault with like sandwich combos blah 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 and like one hit and cancel into a stance on the wall and then do a filler or whatever all that stuff complicated stuff is cool and you know like makes tag assault complicated but like in in the like grand gist of it all like let's say someone just hit a jab as a floater and in the open or something, right? It's not that hard to confirm off. They just bind them, get the second character in, do a big ass string, and end the combo. That's. I feel like that part of the the combo mechanics make it too easy. Like a lot of times, you just die from BS and stuff like that because tag assault. Oh, he's gonna drop the combo, but oh, there's the bind, and then the character comes in. There's the wall carry. I'm, like I'm not sure if I agree with you. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts, Rip, on his statements? <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, because I'm thinking back to like Tekken 5 or even DR. I mean, if somebody got a float combo, they just do some dash jabs, you know, do a wall carry combo, then they get a wall combo. You know, it's like it's still pretty easy. I mean, I don't see that. I feel like this would be harder than that was. You know, I don't. I don't see that. I don't know. I yeah, but I'm saying like from the from like where it used to be, from like where it you know like the damage wise, the potential before was not as big as it was now because now it's like you could turn any opportunity into a big opportunity. Then there's the wall. Then there's a floor break. And then there's a you know whatever. A in that sense, break in afterwards. that sense, I agree with you, Mikey. Because what happens is they someone's going to end up hitting with the launcher that has very good risk reward, like let's say a hop kick. So hop kick on block is minus thirteen on hit it's going to give you a shitload of damage so what you're saying is that you feel like the risk reward is bad not that the the system is easy. i feel like the i feel like the tag assault system just rewards like situations where it wasn't as easy to mm-hmm. maximize before oh, or yeah. get even like good damage i feel like everything's just too like in tag two like this is going back to the damage thing everything could be like a little too explosive everything just like takes off too much i feel like even now I feel like only combos take off too much. I like standing damage being high, and I'm kind of indifferent towards rage. Whether it exists or not, I don't really mind that much. But I think, uh, you know, a safe mid or a semi-safe mid or a semi-safe low on counter hit or something like that should not yield so much damage that it could potentially kill you even though a moment ago you were spacing and you were not even thinking or considering death. That seems yeah. to happen a lot. Like, you know, you're moving, you can breathe, times are, you know, okay, nothing crazy is going on, and then boom, you're dead. You didn't even know. Explosive. Yeah, yep. yeah. So in that regard, I, I agree with you. Rip, you have anything to add to that? No. You got something to add to that. No, I agree. You guys are both saying the same thing. Well, yeah, I guess so. But, I mean, mm-hmm. I thought maybe you'd have some input. No, it's the same. I mean, like, yeah, like, because of the system, you can get more damage out of it. Easier. Too, too much you know, killer instinct, before. dude. This, this conversation is going over your head, man. You just got a what? combo breaker out of those. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, bro. Combo breaker! <laughs> Whatever, bro. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Dude, I love the scream for counter breaker. Combo That's breaker. The best. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so... Uh, Dude, the announcer is so hype. The announcer is hype. And I got to listen to the old announcer, uh, and I agree with you, Rip. The new announcer is way better. The new announcer is way hyper, obviously. Yeah, and, dude, I, I mean, it's the same thing happened to Duke Nukem, man. Like, when they recorded it back in the early 90s, whatever, like, recording equipment wasn't good. It was 8-bit sound, so it automatically made his voice lower and sound raspier. Mm-hmm. And so now when you hear him clear, you're like, uh, mm, whatever. And he just doesn't sound excited. He's like, counter breaker. Shadow counter. <laughs> Shadow counter. <laughs> Good job, boy. <laughs> He's <a> gay guy. <laughs> Shadow counter. <laughs> the only thing that's uh, ultra combo. <laughs> ultra. <laughs> Man, the only thing that he uh, sounds interesting to me in is when he says "k k k combo breaker." But I think that's because it sounds like they reused the original soundbite for it. But the rest of it was all news. All like king combo. King Combo! <laughs> <laughs> they totally yeah. should have put that guy in, dude. That guy was dude, they, sick. You know what, dude? It's a digital game. They could add more voices. They in. should. They, could. they totally should. That would be should. awesome. They totally right? should. Yeah. They should totally put, like, a uh, flamboyant guy's voice in. There. I would love to see that. Hey, they. Uh, why don't they have you do it? You're the perfect man for the job. I would totally do it. For free. Sounds good. I hope that happens. Mm-hmm. 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> back to Tekken. So, uh, Mikey, you've decided uh, in your final character choice, at least as of now, to go with uh, Lars and uh, Christy. Now, up until this point that you settled on this team, you did a lot of character switching. Uh, tell me about yeah. that decision-making process with you and why you ended up settling with uh, Christy Eddie. And who else did you try seriously before that? Um, damn. Oh, well, the first team, first two teams that everybody knows that I tried was always, it's always a combination with Lars. So it's, uh, I was just trying to find the team that would work best for Lars. I really didn't care who my partner was. And, uh, I started off with uh, Steve Lars because I liked Steve Lars, but I didn't really like how Steve fit with the system. I mean, their combos work, but, uh, it's not the best. It's not the strongest damage that you can do with Lars and it's also really difficult to do max damage with that team too so I didn't really like that team too much per se and I didn't like the fact that like like what Min was telling me when he came over here for uh, Evo this year um, he was telling me like Steve it's like this game is all about like taking minus 12 minus 10 da uh, punishers all day and then it's like landing one launcher then taking off like 60 70 percent then you cripple them you know and then it goes from there but he was just like take like three of those it's cool everybody takes three of those and then three punishers and then just uh eat, land a hop kick or something and he was like it's no problem but uh, like with steve with like the the with you know properties of his back one now and all that like <laughs> it's just like i didn't want to deal with that i just wanted to like something easier so i went to leo because i felt like leo had enough launchers <laughs> it was like launch friendly game anyways just throw out launchers mm -hmm. so i stuck with leo and the team you know synergy worked really well but the problem with leo was like i felt like it wasn't a good fit for me because i felt like leo is like really hard to flow with like i can't flow with that character i just can't seem to formulate anything with that character so I, I dropped that character, and then I was trying out, like, different teams. Like, uh, I tried out Armor King Lars for one tournament. I tried out Jinpachi Lars. Well, Jinpa Jinpachi Lars worked out against Run It Black, so that, that was all right. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's not an accomplishment, mirror, Mike. <laughs> it was a Jinpachi mirror match, dude. That, that, that was hilarious. But, um, yeah, after that, I went to... I went to uh, Capos because um, I remember the first thing I remember about that team was uh, like whenever Christy or Eddie hit like while standing 1 3, and then Lars tag, tag buff for that and then a 4 3 and then flipped them around. I was just like, oh, dude, that's the coolest looking combo, dude. I have to play this team. And then I just realized everything you do with that team, just back 3 3, and then you can always tag out into Lars and finish the combo. And it's like, Dude, that's perfect. I never wanted to learn capo combos anyways. I couldn't do it. Like capo <laughs> into like relax two four and then back then forward and it'll drop back into relax and do two four, then go into handstand, then tap forward to go back into relax. And I was just like Combo oh, system is hella that, easy, right, Mike? Like combo system is hella easy. Com <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm, specific mm -hmm, combos mm -hmm, like Chrissy's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe the reason that. you think that shit's hella easy is because you play Lars. I mean, that shit's not hella easy. <laughs> that shit is really complicated and dumb. It's really, uh, what's the I word? Think the system's really convoluted. I think, really I think it's easy. convoluted. It's pretty easy, <laughs> I think. The system. You just got done complaining I mean, about how hard her combos are, and you said, "Oh, good well, thing I got Lars." <laughs> combos, because I'm not good with back and forward move. Back and forward a is a very style. complex input. Yeah, I know what you mean. Move. Back well, plus some. You have to use both hands. Very when difficult. I learning. <laughs> when I was first learning capos, I was holding back, and then she would stay in handstand, and then I couldn't get back into relax. So I couldn't figure it out, but it's okay. I know how to do that combo now, but. Before, I didn't like that combo, but... Easy. Yeah, I just... I think the reason why I picked that team is just because they're so, like, open. You could do anything you want. You like you could take off Red Life whenever you want. I start off with Christy because, like, she has so many great counter hit tools. Uh, the first thing was a 14-frame down forward 2. Like, how am I going to beat that? Like, 14-frame down forward 2 that occasionally crushes jabs. Cool. You know, and a normal hit, I still get guaranteed follow-up. And even if I... Do down forward two, dash up, course circle forward three, and then tag buffer it. Lars can still come in down back two one and catch for a red life combo. If it so floats, right? I feel like that. 
Yeah, even if even if that oh, core circle forward three floats, mm-hmm. or I could do core circle forward three, then back three three, then buff tag buffer it. Yeah, like I have so many choices like with that team. Whenever I want to take off red life, all my combos are gonna take off red life. And okay. I I feel like pretty out. I mean, like the the thing I still don't like about capos is that they can't sidestep. Mm-hmm. But uh, the way I was. Uh, forcing my mix up against James yesterday was I just instead of like running up in his face when I had momentum and doing relaxed stuff because that's how he like just got out of everything before. But yesterday I was just doing relaxed whenever I felt the need I wanted to sidestep or get out of there and just freaking relaxed to panic mm. more re- panic mm. relaxed and then that worked out and then it just randomly crushed a lot of moves so I was just like yeah I guess this is how you're supposed to play her but. So, I, so I you're saying like you were you were not that forcing that. relax on offense. Instead, you were using it on defense when you didn't defense. know what he was gonna do, yeah. but you knew he was gonna do something. Yeah, and usually, what everything he does is just like <laughs> jab, jab, or like <laughs> high hitting, like mid up here, or like you know stuff like that. So I was just like, all right, cool. Avoiding the puddle can't avoid the relax. That's true. Oh crap! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> How this happened? Did you fall? <laughs> if you fell, that would have been sick. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I, I told him fall. not to look at flowers before the show. He was like, whatever. <laughs> oh, God. Good shit. Good shit. Hey, Mike, just so you know, James is in the chat and he was talking about how he's going to kill you next time. Yeah, he said you're fucking dead <laughs> next time. And he called you the H word earlier. Mm-hmm. You better send your guys to his chat. Yep. <laughs> that was so tight, dude. <laughs> People from your chat were in his chat going, Hey, Prod, mod me, bro. I'll help you with these spammers. <laughs> and they were like a mole. It was your, yeah. your guy. That was so sick. I'll help you with these spammers, bro. Dude, so he's like, go for it, man. <laughs> and then he started banning his own guys. Oh, man. That was a nightmare. That was good shit. Beautiful. Anyway, the, another thing that you said, Mikey, that I found to be interesting is that you said, I didn't care what character it was, I was going to pick Lars. So you approached this game. What, what the fuck did Mike do? I have no idea. He is he gone? He has no mic either. Well, this guy. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Maybe his phone fell over this time. Yeah, or he fell over. <laughs> anyway, so Rip, how's it going, dude? I don't know. I think Mike's back. Hello? What the hell happened, Mike? Hello? Oh, God. <laughs> Hello? Does he not hear us? Do you not have a computer? <laughs> oh, there goes Mike. <laughs> I was glad that we we're focusing. Oh, is he back again? I don't no, know. There oh. he is. What the hell happened? Oh, my God. Uh, my mom called me. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Told her to pick you up after school? You hung up? After soccer practice? Yep. <laughs> I had to hang up. I was like, I'm doing a show. No. All right. All right. I hear you. Uh, I forgot right, what so I was good. asking you. What was I asking you? Oh well, yeah, you you seem like you selected your team mm-hmm. off of one character, and then you didn't give a shit what other character you played as long as it was a huge asset to your main character. Do you feel like that's how everyone should compose their main team? Uh, is that your uh, advice? Um, I feel like that's not a bad way to set up your team, but I do play a lot of secondary teams where I have the game plan of what I'm going to go for. Are you is your mom calling again? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you using your phone? You don't have a computer? That's a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Grilled cheese is ready. Come downstairs. Oh, I don't have a I don't have a webcam, dude. Tight. Can't you use your phone as a webcam? Yeah. Isn't that possible? Uh, I don't yeah. know. But then it would probably oh, lose no. the webcam whenever yeah, you get to call or voicemail. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Anyway, go ahead. You're not going ahead. Nope, he's not. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good way to set up a team. That's it? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, at least he finished his thought. Yeah. That's... All right. Yeah. I'm back. Cool, oh, man. How's it going? Yeah, what's... All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's a fine way to construct a team. 
Fine. Um, <laughs> just fine. Fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> Uh, but I think you should have a game plan with what you're going with your team. That's usually what I go for for every team I play. Like, uh, I play I have a lot of secondary teams, and one of them is uh, Miguel Paul. Miguel Paul is Miguel Paul is up, uh, obtain a lead with uh, obtain a lead with Miguel with pokes and yada yada yada. Paul comes in with rage if I ever need him, and then lands that one big mix up. And usually, in some cases, it's a death fist that takes off 60%. That's my plan with that team. But I think my game plan with Christy Lars is annoy the shit out of them with Christy, with throws, pokes, lows, down forward twos, you know, rodeo throws all the time. And then uh, once they finally get annoyed, they're eventually going to get run into a counter hit, and then I take off red life, and then I can decide from there, go for a, go for max damage or bring Christy back in and end up for the Oki mix-up, you know? Hmm. Stuff like that. Okay. Well, I mean, that is Tokido's team. Uh, I don't know if people watching that, know. That's my team. No, no, no. You know what? Tokido, Tokido did not come up with that team. Historically, first. yeah, obviously he didn't. But historically, he has been known to play the cheapest characters in every game he plays. Uh, and he admits this openly. So if uh, Tokido's yeah. playing your team, you know it's a cheap team. Uh, and he does play your team, except with Eddie. Now, why do you pick Christy over Eddie in that team? Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of people ask me this because I was playing uh Eddie before I picked up Christy because I do like Eddie better than Christy, but you know, it's the first time I ever mained a female character. I'm not sexist or anything, but it's just I just never happened before. But uh, -huh. uh as for Eddie versus Christy, why I picked Christy, it's because her combos are much more consistent. Like let's say if I landed a rage combo and I didn't want to switch out to Lars, that's like the one time I'm one situation where I would keep Christy in to do the combo uh, to maximize on the red red damage. But uh, um, I, the reason why I picked Christy was because combos, first off, because back 3-3 three, three into uh, relax 2-4 is really like timing dependent for uh, for Eddie. You have to you have to you have to do it right on the perfect height, and you have to kind of delay back 3-3. Three, three, and I don't want to deal with that in tournament situation. And I dropped a lot of like in early like Wednesday night fight footages, I dropped a lot of uh, Eddie only combos because I couldn't time the back three three in tournament situation, and I was like sick of dropping that combo. And if if Eddie drops that combo, you tech, you get to their back, and he's dead. So, mm. and that's one reason. The second reason was because her throws are much better than Eddie's. I mean, in five in DR, Eddie had decent throws. Like uh, one of his, I think it's his two throw where he jumps over you and then he flips you over with his legs after yeah. he. While he's like frog jumping over you, mm -hmm. you used to be able to do like down to if they try to quick quick rise because it'll float them and then you get like wall standing three into a combo. But they they made it so that the recovery is worse and the the length the distance that he throws you is much further. So the down jab doesn't even hit. Interesting. So I didn't know like, that. The so they throw, made that throw worse, huh? Yeah, they made that throw worse from that game to this game because Spirogen was the one that actually showed me that one. Mm -hmm. But. uh but uh, yeah, uh, that's the other reason. Her one throw and her two throw are both really good. Yeah. Because both like uh, her her two throw always gives a free down four. Her one throw gives like a free down four as well, well or a down two. So like, how am I gonna complain about a, a throw that gives me a free hit afterward? Yeah, <laughs> like, good point. Not a lot of characters have that. That's some Tekken Tag One shit. Yeah. Mikey has. In I case mean, it's not don't... much, but like. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, like, it's all good to have, like, a 40 damage throw off of every throw, so. Yeah, definitely. The throw game's pretty strong, I would say. Okay. So, separate from the throws, the the combos are actually more consistent with Eddie, because everyone was, I remember people were saying that Eddie has longer legs, and so his combos are more consistent. No, it's the team combos, right, Mike? The team combos that you have with Lars and Christy work better than Lars and Eddie. No, the, the team combos work the same, but it's the solo combo with the capos that are different. Eddie always had to do that back three three delay, or oh, you okay, have to time okay. it. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, that's mainly the difference. And but the, there is one thing that is different. Eddie's legs are longer, so mm -hmm. there is one situation where, uh, after after a uh, capo, Eddie binds you and does relax two four, and then does that bind move over again, and he stands stays in handstand and does the down three from handstand. Yeah, you know where it's grounded. Mm -hmm. Uh. 
and then after that hit hits grounded, if they try to move, it spikes them, right? So they don't slide on the floor. Yeah. So that it doesn't count as like a grounded hit. They they try to get up as a float hit. So it spikes them right down in front of you, and then Eddie can do relax three, and then it will reach them yeah. in that spike situation. But Christie's does not reach. So they situation. can back roll out uh, if, against Christie. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but that's like very minor, like one yeah. combo situation. And how many times am I ever going to do a solo combo with Christie anyways with that team? So, yeah, I've noticed. But I think that, that team is Christie's much better. I've noticed that when you play, and I was commentating your matches yesterday, it seems like almost every time if you land a launcher in the beginning of the match, you're always going to tag assault. Is that just because of the damage uh, output of the team? Um. It depends. Mike always, always tag assaults. Yeah, you tag assault always. It seems or like red you light. always tag assault. You red light tag assault too, yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? Red light tag assault? Oh, yeah. You oh, always yeah, tag care. assault. <laughs> what, is, uh, is there confusion here? <laughs> I don't know where the confusion came from. We both spoke clearly, Mike. Can you not hear? No, I was, no he, was, he was saying red light tag assault. So I was like, are you talking about red light combo? Or is like burning my red life in a tag assault? I got it. I got it. But uh, why do I always tag assault? Um, I don't always tag assault. I sometimes I like, bring in Lars. <laughs> you know, I mean, I played you again. Like, I played against you yesterday, Rip. Like, I mean, there was a lot uh -huh. of times I didn't tag assault, and then I do Lars down back two, and no, then, no, no, uh, okay, stance wait, wait. three. When you, I mean, when you know you that don't... setup, right? Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying when setup, you right? don't. I, I do... When you don't tag assault, though, you're not doing full combos. You're not doing like a full solo character combo. You're like you like you tag a launcher, and then you just like did a half combo. That's generally how you don't use tag assault. But that's right? Lars's full combo. I guess, combo, I guess that's though. the closest. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Lars I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. But personally, from observing you, Mike, it seems like you'll usually go with, especially if you hit the first launcher of the game, you usually go with tag assault. Um, I don't know if I, I assume that's because of the damage output of your characters. Because even if you you feel like that is the appropriate amount of damage to to give the guy rage anyway, am I correct on that assumption? E, for the most part, yeah. Um, most of the times, if I hit a launcher, they're always going to be ended up in rage anyways. Okay. <laughs> Either from the damage or from me using tag assault, they would have been in rage anyways. Um, but. I don't always use tag assault. Whatever, man. don't get hung like... up on that shit, man. You give it up, prodigy. Don't get all butt hurt. No, there's one no, statement. I have, all right. I have no like like the way I play my team is kind of like flowchart based, depending on like what I do. It's uh the way I have it down is that like if I do the red life combo with Christy, back three three tag buffer out, Lars comes in, binds right, and then I could choose to tag assault there or not. But if I don't, it's just going to be down forward one, dash, down back two into the, the launcher kick, right? The three, the stance three, mm -hmm. where I could tag buffer that, and then I come in with Christy. This is, a, this is the exact setup that I was telling Rip about, is where I do sidestep three down so the three doesn't come up. But then sidestep three, it moves her forward and leaves her in relax. So right when they're in tech rolling, they do a while standing four or while standing anything. It'll just whiff while I do while standing four, three. I mean, relax four, three, the, yeah. the sweep. So, you know, I, sometimes I go for those mix-ups, and I, a lot of times in, in the match against James on stream, I went for that as well with Lars, where I didn't use Tag Assault, just used L Lars to get red life damage, tag Christy back in at the end of the Lars combo, and then Christy comes in, and then there's a couple times where I just run up and did, like, down back 3-4 on James, or, like, a down 4-2 or something for a mix-up, or go for Rodeo after they tech or something. You know, so, like... And then that's my like game plan with that <laughs> situation. But in in the open, I like to just maximize damage because they were just gonna get that. You know, any combo Christy Lars does it always does at least ninety damage. Like even their weakest combo is ninety. Jeez. So you know, it's, it's it's cheap. Worth Why not burn it? <laughs> now let me ask you this, Mikey. Yeah, definitely. Let me ask you this: How do you feel about Tekken Six as a game compared to Tekken Tag Two? Which do you prefer and why? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like Tekken Six for the for the felt the feeling of control. Like um, in Tag Two, there's a lot of moments where you feel like you can't control the situation. Yeah, like I you agree. don't know when they're gonna tag out. You you there's a lot of situations where 
their back looks like they were directly straight on a wall. But for some reason, the game, the Tekken gods wanted to give you a side wall tag and leave you like this much further behind the mm -hmm. character, and then Rip comes in, does a hop kick, and all these <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. <laughs> like that bullshit is what I can't stand in tag two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it was coming. I, I had him, <laughs> and then he tagged at the wall, and I'm just holding for to get closer to him and he's like sidewalled and he's like boom teleports back here and he gets a hop kick I'm just like that's cool yeah uh, dope. Too, but man. in ta seconds I, I don't like that aspect of Tekken Tag 2 the random like wall, the wall side yeah. tag tag in sure. yeah the wall tags like where it's just random sidewall tags I don't like that but uh, in Tekken 6 I guess my only gripe was I didn't like oh god I didn't like law in that game <laughs> You say you didn't I, like law? Stupid. <laughs> I was just thinking about it because I was like, I hated law in that game. So there's not a lot of things I did like in Tekken. You hated uh, Lily too, remember? Uh, yeah, Lily was. Oh my god, that was so frustrating, dude. Character's so safe, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and everything's a launcher that hits like full screen, and it's like she's floating, but I'm trying to hit her with jabs, but it crushes jabs for some reason. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, I can really relate to you on the, the thing you said about not being able to control the situation. I feel like in Tekken 6, it was a lot easier to be good. And what I mean by that is, yeah. the, the, to me, the true essence of being good is always feeling like you're in control. Like you've been in the situation, even if you haven't been in the situation. For example, players like Arario, right? In Tekken 6, he would come to a tournament and kick the shit out of all you guys. The one time I didn't fucking go, he kicks the shit out of everyone. And he hasn't seen half the shit you guys are doing to him. Because he's a really solid player. And that game allows solid play to just transcend characters. It doesn't matter if you don't know the little things in that game. Because it's containable by solid gameplay. But it seems like yeah. in Tekken Tag 2, you have to be way more solid to have that consistent feeling of control. Uh, like players like, even players like Help Me, who is really solid, like way up there, is unable to control this, this kid that's fucking everything, his whole house up. <laughs> you know, he's, flipping he's, everywhere. he's babysitting and this kid's fucking everything up. The whole TV is <laughs> fucked up, everything's fucked up. So, I mean, you know, the game itself is so, uh, like... It's cluttery. There's a lot of characters, and the, the game's tag mechanics around the walls, I think, make it really hard for people to control. So in that regard, I, I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Rip? Um, no, it's just, it's just exactly like I said. It's just that wall situation where things get out of control. Like last night in James and MYK's match, there was that one corner they were in. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my like god. 15 seconds of complete BS. You I know felt what I mean? like, like I was I felt like I was in that corner forever, dude. Like, oh <laughs> Purgatory. God, wall splatted, but no one's landing a combo. Yeah. No combos. Yeah. Re wall splat, back wall splat, whatever is dumb. Yeah, they they just wouldn't stick. Not neither of <laughs> you would stick to that wall long enough for a combo to connect. And I mean, it's like you know, what are you supposed to do? The feeling of control gets thrown out the window. You know, I can totally understand why yeah. people like J.O.P. or Arario would not be attracted to a game like this because of that. You know, that's the, yeah. when the introduction, the first instance in the Tekken series of people hating on the lack of control, like top players hating on the lack of control, was when they implemented the, the uh, crush system. As soon as they mm -hmm. implemented the crush system in Tekken 5, top quote-unquote players were complaining that they're unable to maintain control because people can just close their eyes and do a hop kick. So that was the first instance historically in the Tekken series that I had heard of Tekken players complain like that. Uh, and that didn't happen in T4, which is interesting. Now, since then, it's become even harder to uh, maintain control. They've added a lot more... Uh, other features in the game like tag assault and the wall tags and the wall in general that make it really difficult to control and i think uh that's probably the thing that makes it semi unattractive to veteran players and what that may reminds me of is yesterday i was talking to uh, afro cole outside and he was complaining to me about street fighter 4 and he was saying the one thing he doesn't like about street fighter 4 is that he spent all these years learning how to do things the right way and they added all these shortcuts. And if you don't learn the shortcuts in the new version of 
uh, Street Fighter, you're going, you're going to end up getting missed inputs. You're going to end up fucking up because you're not using the built-in shortcuts that the game mm -hmm. gives you. And that is literally just old man syndrome. I mean, it's, it's hard for him, let's say, this is an example, to unlearn the things he's been doing for, you know, 20 years. Now he has to unlearn that in the clutch and has, has to do a shortcut instead. Now, I think that relates in the context that uh, the legacy skill is not carrying over. And I think that is basically what the problem is here. The legacy skill of being able to control a match and feel comfortable at all times in all situations, even ones that you haven't necessarily been in before, seems like it's not existence, existent in Tekken Tag 2. You know, uh, what do you have to say about that, Mike? How do you feel about that statement? I feel like um, in Tekken Tag 2, to be, con to be good to be a threat or you know anybody worthy is to be there's like one more requirement to be considered good now before it was just like fundamentals and blah 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 and you can control situations before in like Tekken 6 because there's no timing where they could just get up off the floor differently than yeah. all those other times it's either tech roll or stay down after you're a wall combo right mm -hmm. that's what it was before so that's control there's only like two or three options tech roll left tech roll right or stay down you know, that's it. But now it's like, tuck roll left, tuck roll right, stay down, freaking raw tag, tag, tag crash. crash, stay, yeah, or even or even on higher levels of play, it's a uh, wait, then tag crash, and then, yeah, and it's like, wait, then tag crash works great too, by the way. That's fucked up. <laughs> it's fucked up because you spend all this time figuring out how, how to beat tag crash, and then... Mm -hmm. Wait, tag crash. There's nothing you could do to beat it because there's nothing. Yeah, you. Nothing. It's it's perfect. <laughs> like a delayed tag crash. Yeah, if is you're not gonna die. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna if you're if you're not gonna die from the grounded hit, wait, tag crash. Yeah, <laughs> it's can't like you no setup time the sidewalk. What can say? you not time uh, the sidewalk? It's really hard. Well, you can't see I the think... tag crash. You can't. Right. Visually... I mean, you guess the timing of when they're gonna do it. Right, but guessing timing yeah. is you've lost control. So. You of know, course, you've lost control at that point. You know, mm -hmm. so, or even like a Yomi layer on top of that. Don't yeah. even tag crash and just get up <laughs> or something. Right, you know? get up like, and hop kick. You see that work all the time too. Yeah. Yep. These these yeah. levels or of fight back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the <laughs> levels of depth are really really crazy, especially at the wall. And that reminds me, one thing at the wall that we I just can't stand is during the transition when the characters are switching. It seems like sometimes against some moves they get unnatural pushback and it just whiffs. Yeah. Like. There's mm -hmm. an invulnerability or some kind of magic like force a, field. The Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> right there. The Holy Spirit of Tekken just comes down and divinely intervents your fucking combo every no. time. Oh, man, it's crazy. It, it's really like to me, it's a really, really fun game. But you can imagine in a tournament setting how frustrating that could be. It's almost mm -hmm. not possible to replicate some of the shit that you see. It's almost not possible. Yes. So, like, another thing, like, going back on, like, being a good player, you need all those fundamentals, like, throw-breaking, spacing, with punishment, punishing, all that stuff. And on top of that, I think to become a good player in Tech 2 that you never needed before is uh, wariness of the bullshit or wariness of when the bullshit's going to start happening. And uh, a lot of times, a lot of bullshit will start happening randomly for no reason. Like sidewalls, blah blah blah. No one's getting splattered. You can't be prepared you know, for like that. that. You can't be prepared for that. And, or and, in, you know, it's crazy. Try to like, try to like make the best out of those weird situations yeah. and don't panic. It's like it's, something's gonna work out. You know, like, <laughs> you gotta pray, that's what dude. All you can tell yourself, <laughs> you gotta, you stay calm. Yeah, you gotta pray, man. Thing, man. Something's gonna work out. I swear, things will get better. <laughs> like, dude, that combo <laughs> might get last night, man. For example. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, I noticed uh, reality in the chat asked yeah. a little earlier, uh, Mikey. <laughs> did you do you feel like you took Tekken Six a lot more seriously than you are taking Tekken Tag Two in terms of a competitor? In terms of a competitor, um, yes and no. I think in Tekken Six I played more because there was more drive to play because there was more people at the arcade mm -hmm. to play against and there was like a regular scene I, I sh literally went there like every day mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I mean there's there isn't that anymore and now it's like do I want to play Tekken on my free time at home online you know it's like it's either that or you know I play Justice online or whatever 
or it's like, do I want to finish this game? It's like you kind of have to motivate yourself to play tag two. But uh, in terms of training, I feel like in terms of training, I, I practiced more in Tekken 6, but I feel like I'm practicing right in Tekken Tag 2 now hmm. with uh, with how I should play or how what I should be practicing. Elaborate on that. Stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the things that I've been doing, the, the, the things that I do in practice mode is not like always just like combos and stuff. I mean, like I'm doing combos and stuff, but the things I do is sometimes to start off in a wacky position on the screen, hit a launcher and try to maximize whatever I can out of it in a weird corner or like, you know, the walls over here on this side, what can I do? You know, stuff like that I think is really important. Like learning to adjust your combos mm -hmm. on the fly, depending on what crazy situation is going on and try to control it as much as possible. I think that stuff is really important, but I think the, the, the part where I was saying like I'm training correctly now is that uh, the main difference was I was practicing in arcades for console tournaments and this is during the time of when a lot of monitors were still being discovered a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of tournaments were still using monitors that weren't you know exactly you know like perfect mm -hmm. you know I I was at home when the, I always only played at arcade or at home I had a CRT I was playing on so mm -hmm. I never had lag ever anywhere mm -hmm. but now I just recently got a TV with a little bit of lags and now I'm playing online too so it's like I adjusted to that lag setting and I also adjusted from the arcade like cuz when we were playing at that round 1 tournament again for the SBO I mean not SBO, freaking uh the world national the yep. Tekken nationals yeah, it was like it was weird. I had to like play some warm up games because it was like I was sitting down like this, and there was a big ass TV in front of me like here that I wasn't mm -hmm. used to. I was like, I got so used to sitting like ten feet behind the monitor at Wednesday night fights with a stick on my lap. You know, yeah. it's like a different setting. First off, it's like it's and whenever I'm practicing on home at home, I'm sitting on my bed. The stick is never on my lap, so it was really hard for me to adjust to like the stick being on my lap. And being able to move properly with my uh, my wrist, so it's it's just like that kind of stuff. I feel like I made more of a better transition on like practicing lag stuff because there's gonna be monitors at tournaments with lag. I just accepted it by now. It's mm -hmm. like nothing's gonna be lag perfect. I accepted that, and then I also am practicing in, like in freaking underwater or something. So it's like I'm practicing in lag situations. So. Lag stuff doesn't really bother me too much anymore. And then after that, it was just about positioning and like figuring out how to play and not getting used to like the arcade screen being like two feet in front of my face. Like that was like a weird transition for me and took me a long time. Arcade to console. So when you said that you're, one. when you said that you're practicing better now, that's essentially just you're saying that you're preparing for console tournaments as opposed to before where you weren't really doing that. Yeah, exactly. And I'm practicing like with the stick in my lap and everything with like lag, you know, yeah. all in mind too because before I always played in lag free situations, so. Mhm. Mm yeah, you were like, what the fuck is difference. this? You were just falling apart because lag was introduced. Now you're prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I'm like I know what to expect in tournaments, what, you know, like how every, you know, match is going to go. And now it's just about playing the game and and that's another thing, too, about, like, how I revisited, like, because I felt like I reached a plateau. I think everybody reaches a plateau in any fighting game after a while. It's just, like, figuring out how to get past that. And for me, it was just, like, thinking back on all those, like, events, like, going out to those MLGs. It's like, what am I doing wrong lately? You know, like, like the problem I had was I couldn't play against anybody in, like, out of state and stuff because mm -hmm. I wasn't used to their style. But I really, like, in Tag 2, I tried to work on all those little aspects on my gameplay to become a better player like every little thing like what's like you know what's a good formula for offense or what's a good this and that you know like what should I do in this range and dance around you know all that stuff's important figuring out what to do to dance around and like manipulate the opponent to think in this way and stuff like that as well interesting okay uh, next thing I wanted to ask you about is so you mentioned what you didn't like and liked about Tekken 6 and you mentioned that about tag 2 now and going into the future uh, I think chances of the series changing a lot in the next game are high uh, and I think probably really it's gonna go in the direction of 
uh, ease of use. The changes are going to be going in that direction. So, what in your in your opinion, what would you want to be changed or taken out of the system? And to start with, I I'm going to mention tag. Do you think the next game should be a tag game? Because I heard Harada when the game first came out mention that that's what he thought should happen. What do you think? Tag being gone? No tag. Well, either the next game Tekken Seven being a tag game or it being a solo game. Hmm. You know, that's interesting because, like, you know, Tag 2 also kind of tried to save itself from becoming a tag game by adding that solo mode, mm -hmm. but no one really cares about that anymore. No, it's like it's like the same same thing, like, add a solo mode, add a tag mode, whatever, you know? It's like, I personally like tag. I would like them to make a final decision if they do decide tag or single mode, you know? I'd rather it be one or the other, not both, and get, like, mm. a life differentiation, like, fucking Street Fighter or something. Differentiation, huh? Shit. Gotcha. But, whatever. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. Uh... <laughs> So you could but, go with yeah, either way, huh? I think either, either or, I just don't want them to do like, oh, you know, we'll give you this, but we'll give you this too, just yeah. in case you don't like that one, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I, it, I like there's no reason personally. to do that. I agree. Is that a I dog like appearing? Is that a Tomlin type yelling? Like, tag... No, it's not me. No, I don't have dog. a dog. Okay. <laughs> dog face. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Beating his dog up. <laughs> Don't do that. All right. Anyway, what um, else would you yeah. like to see uh, go? I mean, what about Rage? What about Bound? I mean, look at Tekken Resolute. There's no Bound in that game. I mean, is the, do you prefer that? Okay, a couple style? things. A couple things about Tekken Resolution, man, um, that I don't like. Tekken Revo Revolution. I don't like how you can't get floated for a back row catch. I don't like. Any mm. of that. I think that's really scrubby and it pisses me off. Cause it's like, I got you in this Oki situation, but now it's either I hit you or you just roll away. No, either way, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to get comboed anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Further than that. I really hate that. Um, but I think they're doing some interesting things with Tekken Revolution with like uh, the invincible moves. Mm -hmm. I don't think are too bad. Um, I also don't think that. The I think the new backdash animation, the back walk animation, is pretty good. I think that's in the right direction too. Yeah. It helps mm -hmm. people with like backdashes and stuff. But uh, I think those are good changes to make the game easier, and it doesn't really affect the veteran players either because you can still backdash normally too. Mm -hmm. um, I think changes like that are okay. But as far as system changes, uh, I like a lot of the systems. I don't. You know, I mean, like for Tag 2, Tag Assault is kind of, I like it, I don't like it, love or hate relationship on that one, but uh, Rage, I think it's good. I think it's good in Tag 2 for the time duration that it lasts for, but I think the damage needs a little toning. Um, yeah, other than that, like Tag, if they do keep make it a Tag game, I don't know, man, Tagging and Tag Crash, that's a little finicky i don't like that but you know tag crash is kind of always kind of wonky to me what do you think rip what are your uh, thoughts so on I what kinda... he's mentioned um you know the same thing about tech revolution frustrates me you know just like you feel like you have you knock him down you got him in a situation where you can do something and then you can't really you know like it's it's so limited compared to what was uh possible before so that's super frustrating about revolution uh invincible moves like i am starting to feel like if if, if revolution was an offline game Invisible moves would be terrible, I think. Um, but because it's online, it's it's not that bad. Like I feel like if I if I get just a little bit of a life lead, I feel like I can just beat you with just invincible moves after that. Because you can't hit me. You know what I mean? Like if you hit me with anything, it's gonna be invincible. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I feel like I can do it on reaction. You know what I mean? Like it's close mm -hmm. enough. So I think the fact that it's online, you can't really react that fast. I think that helps revolution uh, with invincible moves. So it's it's a fine line. It's 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 not the end of the world to have them. Um, but, I think you know. uh, invincible moves will be a nightmare in a situation where you can hear your opponent. Invincible moves, because whatever button they pushed, it's not going to touch you. So all you got to do is That's hear that they pushed a button, <laughs> boom, Man, invincible move. Nothing that you, that button did is going to touch <laughs> you. So yeah. 
and and audibly it's easy to have you know reactions like that your ears are really closely tied to your reactions so if you're listening and you just listen for any button press and do the invincible that's just going to be cheap so yeah so know. yeah for an offline game i don't know how that's going to work out um there was another change for a revolution what was it oh yeah the critical hits i don't really like that feature yeah that's I retarded mean, it's, yeah and then um yeah it's really random too right Mm -hmm. yeah. Soul Calibur did that. Yeah. Soul Calibur Five had random, quote unquote, clean hits, and basically certain uh, moves ugh. would randomly do more damage if they hit you. Totally random. It was admitted by them that it was random. So I don't yeah. know why Tekken stupid. copied that, but it's stupid. I agree. Go on, Rip. They just they want to give you a chance for your stats to mean something, I guess. But uh, you know, I mean, the stats thing, like if they are they going to keep that, I I hope not. Mm, yeah, not no for an way. offline game. I and mean, you know, we don't know if they're going to make an offline game. I mean, I assume they will, but you know, we never know. Like it might be Revolution Two from now on. You know, I really don't know how that's going to go. Could be. Uh, but yeah, if it's a tag game again, then the only thing that I have a real issue with in Tekken Tag Two is just the wall situation. You know that that kind of stuff that happens near the walls, like not necessarily even wall combos. You know, just when you're positioned close to the wall, somebody tags in around, and they appear mm -hmm. ten feet away from you. You know, like those things are the things that frustrate me the most about Tekken Tag Two. Other than that, you know, I, li I like the game as is. Um, would I? I'm wondering if I want tech catches back in. You know, like uh, I, I, I really liked having unblockable tech catches in, not necessarily in Tekken Five, but like in Tekken Six. You know, and like, the way they were in that What was in game. in Tekken Six that's not now? You could do like unblockables, like Bruce, you know. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, oh. who cares? That's such a small. I'm just part saying, of the game. it is it is a small part of the game, but I mean, it's it's one of those things that separates a top layer from a scrub. That's what I feel like. I guess yeah, yeah it, the it, control it, thing. Like if this guy's gonna just mash while he's being juggled, yeah. he's gonna tech into an unblockable. I understand. Right. You know, so that it's just, it was a small thing, and I don't necessarily feel like it had to be removed. Um, so that's something I would hope that they would put back in. That's pretty much it, I think. Interesting. Okay, I mean, it seems like generally we're on a similar stance when it comes to that. Um, I mean, is there any other topics you guys are interested in uh, mentioning? Uh, I know, Mikey, yesterday you mentioned you wanted to talk about the scene. Uh, and my, my response to that was, I don't really know anything about the scene anymore. I don't look at TZ anymore because I can't see. I don't, uh, <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a Facebook uh, so I'm so basically the whole scene. very much disconnected from the Tekken scene. I'm more, much more yeah. about Tekken as a game than Tekken as a scene. Yeah, uh, but I've you mentioned like you right wanted you had something to you. say. So what are, what are your thoughts on the scene? I guess. Um, I've also not really been on Facebook or all that stuff either. Like I'm pretty much like internet, like forum stuff and all that. It's all kind of gone now. I feel like, mm -hmm. uh, which I kind of miss, but. Um, I think I think like the scene's just not there anymore, man. It's just, like everybody's not playing. There's no like big tech and tournaments to look forward to. There's no like strong styles mm -hmm. in like six months that we're looking forward to that we're all training for. There's probably not gonna be tech and evil next year. And just everything's just like freaking rain cloud above my head, like raining on me all day. Like <laughs> You're playing the wrong game, like, man. Go play Marvel and uh, Street Fighter. Or Killer Instinct, dude. No, go play know. Marvel like, and Street just, Fighter. <laughs> It just doesn't. I don't know, man. I think that just sucks. I think uh, nobody's playing this game any, anymore. It's not being so really negative, man. You're like bumming out everybody is. in the chat. The whole chat's about to start crying. <laughs> dude, I'm just trying to get more people to play, dude. Like that's all I've ever tried to do. Get more. It's people really to play. hard, dude. Like, uh, okay, speaking from my perspective, it's really hard to want to play in the the environment that we have to play in now. I mean, before, you know, okay, let me let me use this as a perfect example. Mike, you, or let's say, who's another example? I mean, even Rip or any of these guys that I know who are my friends now, Riksta, these types of people are not necessarily the types of people that I would be friends with or invite to my home under any other circumstances other than we met at the arcade and we both all like Tekken and now we have other things in common and now we're friends. But without that arcade thing, it's so hard to make friends. You know, it's like yeah. there isn't a place for you to go and meet strangers without being like, hey, amigo, you know, come play me in my living room. And it's like, you know, and I got to meet your sister and I got to pet your dog. And 
I gotta do, take off my shoes. shoes you know, <laughs> who the fuck wants to do that shit in some other person's living room? It's like, and they got fucking wall scrolls. You know, that shit's <laughs> dumb, dude. I and have a wall scroll. The, the, in, the, also, that environment does not really promote that. Like, you know, I've I remember back in <sighs> DR, I used to sit down next to Sukin. And he used to think it was dope doing that play dead shit against my king. I used to just down forward one a million times over and over. And he didn't know what to do. And he would get so frustrated. And I would just keep doing it. I didn't give a fuck over and over. I don't give a shit. Who is this asshole? We're not in my living room. We're not in his living room. Fuck Sukin. Every time I'm going to do a down forward one. Fuck you, Sukin. Every time. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Over and over. You couldn't Just go so to know. someone's house and fuck them like that over and over. You can't do that. But in the arcade, you're allowed to fuck them as much as you want over and over in any means, you, however you want, you know? So I feel Probably like so. that environment really um, breeds a better player. You know, it just breeds a better player. That cutthroat, fuck this guy attitude is what mm -hmm. makes you good. You know, and that's true. We don't have that now. And even if we did play in each other's, uh, you know, living rooms, we wouldn't get that. You know, so that's the thing for me. Like the environment is not very, um, the, not the type of environment that breeds skill, in my opinion, these days. And that's yeah. part of the reason why I struggle with playing. Uh -huh. Going on about that too is the the fuck that guy and fuck this guy thing too. Like well, nowadays, I feel like everybody just makes too much. Of a big deal when somebody's mad about losing. It's like, oh, that guy's salty. That oh, shit's yeah, that tight, dude. Come on, <laughs> I salty, love dude. that. Why is it salty about that, Mike? I know. <laughs> so good. That's my I favorite know. part. The only thing. <laughs> like, so, so the fighting game scene has evolved, and the only thing that's the only good thing that's come of it is that shit talking is like. You don't have to fight afterwards. Back in the day when people would talk shit, it was like, okay, fisticuffs are inbound. Now it's like, oh, look how salty this guy is. He got bodied. He's godlike. He better go back to the lab. <laughs> go to the beach. You know, it's like, it's like normal. That's what you say every time. It's perfectly normal, standard practice. And I love that. That's my favorite part of the new era of the fighting game community. So I'm it's against stupid. you on that. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you know, it's funny and all, and I think it's funny too, but it's like, I think that anger, that moment when you lose and you're like, oh, you know, the mm -hmm. Hulk mode, <laughs> when everybody's making fun of you, I think more people need to get salty, yeah. like, honestly, because not enough people get mad now. It's just all shits and giggles now. It's like, that like that whole arcade thing you just explained about, about, like, how, like, there's no cutthroatness in, like, living rooms, it's like... You need that, man. Like before, it was just like, man, fuck this guy. I can't wait till the next time I get like five bucks so I can put in a couple quarters so I can beat him. You know, it's like, there's not that in. Hmm. Have you guys? Dude, I remember. Heard... Go ahead, Rip. What were you gonna say? No, no. There's a guy on on TZ right now who's talking trash to people in Tekken Revolution. It's like by far the most entertaining thing I've seen on TZ in forever, and I only know about it because people in my chat link me to it. But I mean, that guy's like, it's like, Zaylan, Zaytan, Zayran, Zoltar. something like that. Something like that. Zaltan? I don't know. He sounds like a medicine. Zaynar. There you go. Zaynar. <laughs> Check him out. That's Zazmasol. very entertaining. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was a Soul Calibur 3. That's that guy. <laughs> Zazmasol, big black guy. Don't yeah. fuck with him, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, you guys are right. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, though, because I've been noticing the injustice scene in SoCal. And. They're like a bunch of young guys, but like there's guys like Nubcake there. You know, he's a Batman player. He he won that one time. Perfect Legend came out, and I just feel like that scene. They're just so young that they have more time or more drive or something. And like, they're like, yeah, man, let's let's just get games. We'll hammer out this matchup, blah blah. blah. You know, and I'm like, we see each other. We're like, who cares? <laughs> hey, you want to look at <laughs> you know, these flowers? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> and all these all these uh, injustice guys right now. You know, they a bunch of them went to NEC. You know, they're all flying out tomorrow. They you know they took off days off work whatever so they can fly out and you know they're they're traveling together to level up and just just to show that their socal scene is you know still yeah on the level of the east coast level and i don't know what it is about the tech scene maybe we're just old but uh they yeah. have a drive still you know yeah i don't i don't know what it is either i i'm i'm inclined to say that it's the game that's how i feel i don't know if that's the truth but I mean, even myself at th this age, when Injustice first came out, Charles and I were 
banging out the matchups. You know, we uh-huh. were talking about that, and we were really into it. He was playing Deathstroke too. I was playing Deathstroke, uh-huh. and we were really serious about it. You know, when the game first came out. So I don't think age or time has anything to do with it. I think the game has to motivate the player to want to do this. You know, it's uh, the and, drive. Yeah, I, I, personally, for me, it's the game. I can't speak for you guys. I can't speak for Mikey, but I feel like the game doesn't motivate me. You know, uh, what do you think, Mikey? Um, the game still motivates me. I still have a lot of fun playing the game, and even at home, I online, I almost never play my main team. Like this whole week, I did not play Christy Lars until that tournament. Like that was the first time I was playing. This whole week, I've been playing Bob Lars. I mean Bob, uh, Bob Bryan. But it's just like the whenever I get bored of Tekken, I just try to find another team. You know, try to find an interesting character what partner or what filler a partner could have that I think would be a good idea and what they could do the other way around. I just like, I think that's a lot of fun. Like, you know, like trying to make your own combos, mm-hmm. coming up with uh, team ideas. And like, even when I'm not playing the game, you can still think about it. And it's like, Oh yeah, this character has this three hit string that does that at the end. Or like this character has that two hit string that spikes them. And I can do this with my point character. And it's like, I think that stuff is really fun about Tekken. It's just the, I think like speaking for the injustice players i hang out with slayer every wednesday now you know looking at flowers all day but uh he reminds me of how i used to be when i was 18 19 like where he's at now he is like every time he loses every week he's just like oh man i could have had him dude if i just did this or that you know it's just like not enough people are like that Mm -hmm. not enough people have that drive not enough people get salty when they lose it's just all comical you know it's like oh, I can't show that I'm salty because everyone's gonna say I'm salty like oh, come on man like really yeah if but not, doesn't that I make told, you like, saltier that, isn't that what you're saying <laughs> the point is that everyone's calling you salty so then you get saltier shouldn't you get better yeah that's true that I should think make you want to get better I think what you're saying is that when people talk shit in the chat or when people just laugh at you being salty, you get mad at the wrong thing. Instead of getting mad at losing, you get mad at yeah. people calling you salty, and that's not the right thing to get mad at. Rip, what were you going to say? Nothing. Oh, I thought you were going to mention something. What the hell is that in your mouth? That can't be clean. Disgusting. Yeah. Any- <laughs> <laughs> that has been tampered with by myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I mean, um, unless you guys have anything else to add, we can move on to calling people bitches. I have a pretty good one. You have a bitch? Ooh. What about you, Rip? You have you got one, or you need time? I can come up with a couple. I've been gone for a couple weeks. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Mikey, you go first. Okay. So I was trying to return a jacket at Zoomies today, right? And then the girl there is the fucking biggest bitch ever. <laughs> okay. My entire fucking week, dude. Like, I was having a perfectly fine week. Like, my whole week was fantastic until this fucking bitch today pissed me off, man. Like, I was so heated. I was like, oh, my God. Dude. Oh, my God. But, yeah, basically, I came in. I was returning a jacket, right? I exchanged it. I was trying to find something that I liked. I got it as a present, but then I got the receipt too. So on the receipt, it says, you know, 30 days return. Return or exchange is no problem, right? I go in, get a return, right? But I literally just looked at flowers outside before I went in. And then she's like, oh, I can't take this back. I can't give you a return because it smells like flowers. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking what? about? What? Like are you shit. serious? Like a brand new fucking jacket. I was like, dude, it smells like a brand new jacket. Without the acidity, of course. Haven't like, you ever smelled a jacket before? It smells like, just like a jacket. It doesn't smell like flowers at all. <laughs> Let me talk to your manager. <laughs> and then, dude, I was so pissed. And then she's like, I, I, you know, I can't, I can't give you a return, but I can give you exchanges. Whoa. I was like, I don't want an exchange. I want a return. Like, why? Like, well, one thing that didn't make sense to me, her argument was like, I can't put it on the shelf as a return. Because the jacket smells like flowers, apparently, even though the jacket didn't smell like anything. Uh, her excuse was the jacket smells like flowers. I can't put it on the wall because it will smell like flowers. But for an exchange situation, we can. You don't want any shirts that we have or another jacket? I'm like, why didn't you just go and like just air it out? Oh, that's what I told her. I was like, what do you want me to do? Spray this thing and come back? Fabrice, like, oh, that God. motherfucker, dude. Brand new. Exactly, right? I, it might I came smell home. like flowers then. 
No, I got <laughs> yeah. for that bottle of Febreze, and I smelled my jacket, and I was like, it smells like a brand new fucking jacket. Boom. We fucking wasted my time coming home. So did but you yeah, return it or girl, no? girl, I didn't get to return it. So Damn, I'm going so back you to got home. owned, huh? And you got salty, wow. huh? All right. Yeah, I got I got hella salty. But yeah, that girl at Zoomies today, you're a bitch. You ruined my fucking week. <laughs> Jeez, man. God. She owned you pretty hard, man. I got to meet this girl. She might be and my then, dream dude, girl. You know what? <laughs> like, owning people that hard? Like, is there anybody else? You know what she said, too? I was like, is there a manager or anybody else I can speak to? He's like, I am the manager. Damn, I love Lucy. Hold on one moment. It puts on a different hat. What's up, amigo? <laughs> I'm the manager. <laughs> <laughs> damn, don't that she owned you, man. All right. At first, when you started the story, I'm like, damn, this fool is retarded. But it got pretty <laughs> riveting, you know, with the uh, smelling like flowers. At least you saved the receipt. That's good. Um, Rip, who's the bitch? Unbelievable. I agree. Oh man. Um... <laughs> oh, Tom Brady. <laughs> I could see it in your eyes. <laughs> um... Tom Belutal. Yeah, it. it's hard, man. It's hard to it's hard to put into words the reasons why. You know, like I Tom Brady is a bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I mean, there's just it was three weeks, man. You know, it's just he's like a cellmate. <laughs> you had to flush the toilet every time you took a drop of turd because he he would smell it. Damn, prison oh, strength. Man. Yeah. It was a long three weeks. And I'm still recovering, you know? I'm still recovering from it. And there's just so many things that I could talk about that I can't talk about. Mm. So, don't. I, I mean, the main one... Well, not the main one. This is definitely not the main one. But I'm wondering if I can talk about it. Well, don't get yourself into trouble. I mean, you can leave it at that if you want. There's no rules. You could just you could say Albert's a bitch, and nobody could know who Albert is. That's you know, whoever you want, man. If he's a bitch, mm -hmm. he's a bitch. It's your call. I don't want you to get in trouble. No, okay, he's a bitch. All right, fair enough. Tom Brady, <laughs> you're a bitch, I guess. Tom Brady and the jacket saleswoman. Mm -hmm. Anyone could be Fuck a target. Her. Uh, my bitch calling of the week is most certainly Musasaurus. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Every time I feel like he sits around waiting to see me log on to GTA so he can fucking come over and kill me every time. I'm trying to coordinate my shit. I'm trying to get the guns I need and everything. I can't even make a move. This guy's on me like a hawk. I can't do anything in that game. Every time I turn the game on, Musasaurus is fucking around, killing me every time. So, as soon as I get that tank, Moose, I'm going to drive that fucking thing right up your ass. It's going to be beautiful. I'm almost there. I'm at the high enough level. I just need like 1.5 million, and I am going to fuck you up, Moose. You are my bitch calling of the week. You're a bitch, Moose. You're a bitch. Uh, <laughs> I feel a lot better after that. Woo. <sighs> It's so okay. funny because I know exactly where you're coming Fucking from. Fucking unbelievable. Terrorizes me. I can't even play the game. It's like every time. It's just... Dude, that's what Burr did to me. Burr man. is a son of a bitch too, man. Anyway. Yep. Uh, Rip, I'll give you the opportunity to plug your shit. You got all kinds of KI stuff coming up, so you might as well do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, yeah. I wrote this good book, The Killer Instinct Ultra Fan Book. There's a bunch of art in it. Interviews in the back. I didn't show anything about it, but anyway. Uh, strategy Guys Online, eguidepremogames.com. 10 bucks for Strategy Guys, 20 bucks for the book. You can follow me at R E E P A L. I think it says on the screen below me. And my YouTube channel is Level Up Your Game, and I stream at Level Up Your Game as well. That's it? Yeah. Bread and butter next Monday? So. Yeah. How'd you know that? I was I watching your stream earlier. MYK. Bread and butter next Monday? 